Chances go crypto investing, bell notification, comment down below, like the channel, and most importantly, subscribe for that truth and information and integrity and education you need to make an educated decision on your asset acquisition phase. And Zoom, uh, and I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I play one on this radio channel. This is only my personal opinions on the market, right? And some of the things that I do, Zoom, one of the big things with Zoom when it IPO'd, it came out during COVID when everybody, and this was thanks to a subscriber, and I think I love when subscribers comment and ask things. John Samson, like Mr. Samson, I want to talk to Samson, getting high as the moon. However, that song went back on the great comedy show, great comedy movie from Dave Chappelle. Mr. Samson, I thank you for your comment. And Zoom, one of the big problems with Zoom, as we put some indicators in the background, we're gonna start with the VP volume indicator right here. I like using the fixed profile range. It gives you an idea where the volume is and I would highly recommend everybody use this effective tool. And then you go, and what I do, is I like to find the mean. And this is where all the trading's been, right? And the, one of the big problems that happened with Zoom was when it IPO'd. It was fortunate and unfortunate at the same time. And I say it was unfortunate because everybody was at the stay-at-home stocks. So everybody bought this one up. And the problem with that is, is if you bought before and you just happened to be holding it when it IPO'd in 2019, uh, mid to late 2019, and then you bought it, and then it skyrocketed, you could sell for a phenomenal profit, right? I mean, it, it phenomenally, you, you could have sold it if you would have even bought the peak of the first when it came out as a four bagger. It was four to 500%, seven, 800% from the bottom, which is a phenomenal return for all these guys. The only problem was with the big pump and the big over exuberance and the misallocation of capital into a company that just IPO'd that was not making any money at the time, uh, the price was way too high. And people that didn't understand that, most of the retail traders, I can guarantee you, bought in right up there. More than 70% of the traders bought in there and probably 80% of those traders that bought in north of there bought in right there, thinking it was gonna continue going to the moon. And the unfortunate part was when it came out, now it got so overvalued, the stock price was so high and it had no reason to be that high, it had to crash. And when it crashed, all these people got essentially fleece heisted and shisted by not being educated, buying and FOMOing into something they didn't understand. And the price took a huge dive. What was it down? Let's get over here. The price went down 89.69% from its top. And at current price, it's down 88.17%. Now with the Fed, what they're doing, the inflation, the way it is, and the bear market rallies that have been taking place, I could absolutely see a nice bear market rally in this right now. Long term, could Zoom be a very viable, profitable company? Yes, it could. But right now, it's not. So right now, what you would be doing is accumulating. If you think and you want to hold this long term, it's down 80% from where it was. Doesn't mean it can't go down another 80%, but it's it's extremely oversold now. And eventually, at some point, the shorts are going to cover. And when the shorts cover, as we learned and we know, they turn into buys into the open market, which will pump the price up. And you can get a 20, 30, 40% rally when the shorts start to cover. And then if that happens and you start moving up, you can see once you get by here, the 83.22, there's not a lot of volume in between 83.22 until the next major volume at 106. So that can be a nice rally. And then you get up into here and then the retail trader starts pumping it and you get one of these big uh, rallies that look something like this, right? And you can have a huge rally in the short term, something that looks like that, right? The long term in the next year or two, do I think we're coming back up here? No, I don't because they got to start making money. They got to start expanding their business operation and they got to start uh, getting things, uh, really getting things done, right? And they're not making money, I don't believe right now. Their earnings per share uh, was, where are they at? What is their earnings per share? 0 0.01. Their PE is 14. 14,838, which is absolutely, absurdly, uh, it's just, it's just nonsense where that's at. Look at Tesla. Tesla is high and they're only at a 79 PE, but Tesla's got a lot of things, but that's still very, very high. And for 14,000 PE ratio and zoom, that tells you one thing, even if there's a nice bear market rally in here, uh, either they got to start making a bunch of money soon or the price is going to continue to come down 
and this is this isn't done coming down yet because I think with a PE of fourteen thousand, I could see another eighty percent dump where you get to the ten to twenty dollar range, right? I could see a targeted down there. And I don't think this is done dumping yet. And right now you're trying to hold this major area where the IPO price, because if you break the IPO price, this big pump up that you had there, you could have the exact opposite on the bottom. And you look something like that over the next year, year and a half, right? But there could be a nice bear market rally, maybe even up as high as the 200 day moving average before you came down. But I would say there's a lot of downside risk here. If you want to invest in Zoom for swing trading, use your technicals to try to swing trade it or parcel your way into long-term trading. What I mean by parceling is if you got a $10,000 stack of cash that you want to put in for a long-term investment in the Zoom, buy 20% right now. And then if it starts to tank, and it goes down 30% by 20% more, right? And buy on its way down. Don't go all in. Just as if it goes up after you buy your 20%, don't just FOMO and buy more in on the way up thinking it's going to continue up. I think this has a lot of downside risk. I really do. I really think they got way too high, way too much momentum, way too much hype, and way too high of a stock price, as you can see with a 14,000 PE. I think there's a big crash still to come in Zoom. I don't think it's done flushing out. Could there be a bear market rally? Absolutely. But I think there's a lot of risk right now if you put a big bag on Zoom and not understanding uh, actually what's still going on. And a lot of money has to get sucked out of here because there was way too much money put into it. Kind of like if you look at uh, just so a completely different but similar circumstances, the Dogecoin, it got up to 60, 70 cents and it was just astronomically absurd that the price had to come way down and the price came down better than 90% and still probably has a huge fall to go. This, I believe there's a lot of risk to it right now, but if you want to long-term hold it, parcel your way in a little bit at a time. As you can see, your critical area that you're on right now is $68 that you need to hold. And then you got your major overhead resistance on a short-term bear market rally, like a lot of these other companies are doing, would be up here at uh, $111 or starting at about $117 at the midpoint, right? But you would have to first break out of this falling channel. And falling channels are bearish continuation patterns, but bullish at the bottom of them when they finally break out. And a targeted move on that would be the top of the channel, which coincides with the $118. But if it breaks down, you're going to come back down, probably down towards $45, $55. But it's something to pay attention to in the long, in the long term. Right, I still think they're highly, highly overvalued and they're going to have a big, big downside risk. As you can see, Arivion's only a negative 7.08 earnings per share and they are doing very well. They're building cars. They're doing good. The stock price continues to pump. It's highly volatile. I still think this is going up to $40 before it comes back down to say $12. If it ever does come back to $12, it is possible. But right now you can see the volume continues to stack up in the weekly time frame, it's the highest two consecutive weekly, then this week's not over yet. So this week's volume by the end is probably gonna overtake last week's volume, which will be two consecutive all-time highs in weekly volume. As you can see, it shattered the IPO volume and then the volume was stagnant to nothing. Um, I think this has a lot more upside to go. I think $40 is the next major move. If you're not in now, I'm not a financial advisor. There's more than just crypto out there. And there's a lot of money being made in a lot of sectors right now. And a lot of people in the crypto sphere are unfortunately holding bags down 60, 70, 80, 50, 40 percent and they're if they didn't have any other capital set to the side for other sectors they're missing out on all of these opportunities uh and you really need to pay attention to this as you can see the gold and the silver market right uh silver's up another two and a half percent gold's just sitting there practically even some of the mining stocks are doing they're up slightly copper's having a good day but they're they're basically cooled off after a six to 12% across the board move in the mining sector as the cryptocurrency sphere, as we've just, holy shit, we just had a massive explosion in XRP. So there's the move people have been waiting for in XRP. And there's part of the move that we've been talking about in XRP, maybe pumping up to that 68 cents. And you can see in the last couple of minutes, XRP is rewarding some of you guys uh, that got into here and it is having a hyper pump and that's the upside we were talking about the other day of that 68 cents. 
So that's very exciting here in the XRP market. If we look at the volume in the two hour time frame, let's go to the daily time frame. It looks like the volume's having a, that stupid shit's in my way. The volume's trying to have a uh, somewhat of an uptick. So that's very bullish right here. And I'd be looking at an upside potential like we've been talking about up here at the 68 cents. Don't FOMO into things because if you FOMO into things, this thing could come right back down uh, 15 or 20 percent in a consolidation and then you're trying to trade in and out of shit and it becomes a disaster so that's something you got to pay attention to if you were in that uh ride the pump if you're in there for a swing trade do whatever you need to do long-term holding your time to consolidate and buy more was before this pump now you got to let it do what it's doing if you're long-term uh holding you don't want to buy more shares after it skyrocketed 24 percent in a matter of a few minutes because you need this volume to be in there to sustain this because all you've essentially just done is you came all the way back up here to the, these old highs from 58 cents back here and 58 cents back here so it'll be interesting now to see the next few days how this trades out can it build the base now up above this old resistance right here you had resistance back here in november of 22 and you've had a lot of resistance back here through the start of the through april until now can you hold the base or over the next couple of days even if you get the 66 cents do you immediately sell back off so that's what you need to be watching in the xrp price it's essentially what we've been talking about but we finally had a big massive candlestick to the upside and that essentially i believe just popped off right now so i would expect a continued pump in xrp but uh Oh, there we go. It's up to 60 cents now. So it is. It's probably going to get up near that 68 cents. And that would be a major area you want to break through. And then you got major, major upside that would continue to the upside, right? DGB is having a little bit of a rally there. XRP seems to be leading the pack right now. Bitcoin's responded. They must have liked whatever the Fed said uh, today. They must have liked the Fed news or the jobs data or whatever. Uh, they must have liked, but everything's been pumping around crypto. So now these crypto coins are starting to come around. So it'll be very interesting to see how high these can pump and how far they can go, right? It's kind of what we've been looking at and watching out for for quite some time. Like, subscribe, and share to Vincenzo's Gold Crypto Investing. Peace and love.